William Frimpong says that, uh, please ask Dr. Amor why he didn't use the money for Susan Kofi building to invest in agriculture. Then uh, Osai Hini Kofi Mensan says, does Dr. Kofi Amor have farms himself? Then Percy Brown says, kindly give us the link to sign the petition. We are ready to sign. Then uh, Richard Yeboa says, Susan Kofi is right on planting for food. I agree with him. We haven't done anything to reduce meat imports to Ghana. Let's wake up. Okay. Mm -hmm. So somebody says that you have a nice building. Susan Kofi, why didn't you invest in agriculture? Why didn't you, what does he say? Uh, he said, why didn't you invest in agriculture? Yes. And then you see Fisaka from Tamale says that how many of the planting for food and jobs projects has these rich men like Kofi Amwa participated in? Mm -hmm. See, let's not direct the discussion mm -hmm. into what have you done, this and all of that. Every individual will select an investment that they have passion. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Look, I have, I have revolutionized money transfer business on the African continent. Billions of dollars have come into Africa. Hundreds of thousands of jobs have been created in various countries on the African continent. I've made my contribution. So, do, so, so have a lot of people. But in terms of my businesses, is you go into a business that you have expertise, you have passion, and all of that. The fact that somebody is not going into agriculture doesn't mean that he doesn't, he, he will not applaud somebody who goes into agriculture. I have some vacant land at Kokrobite. Mm -hmm. I don't believe in land that is idle. So I can say that I have a mango farm and I have a coconut farm. I use my land available to me usefully. You've been there. Mm -hmm. You've seen that, you know. Yes, yes. Yes. I, you know, the other day I sold 600 uh, coconuts. We have it. Says, says, that's my contribution of food in my own way, even though my direct business is not into that. You know? Okay. Another question is from Bodhi Dan. So he says that, ask him that, because I want my family members to be rich and I take a loan to build a house, and I don't have someone in the family to be the builder. So I shouldn't take the loan to have the house built by other people. That's the question. Yeah, I see his question. Yeah, he takes a loan. He wants to build yeah. a house. He, yeah. he doesn't care. He'll get somebody to build it. Okay, build but it, you see, his, his question, his question um, is, is not the same as what we were discussing. Uh, mm -hmm. he, he wants to build a house. And he's saying that he doesn't have anybody in his family who, who is a contractor to build a house. So he was going to get a, a contract from us. And that's fine. Mm -hmm. It will not impinge on anything. But if you're a country and you go and borrow money from outside mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to come and build a hospital, you are telling me that there's nobody in Ghana who can build that hospital? That's the point he's making. Yes. It, you know, and, and that's, that's, that's fallacious. Even if that were true, you can do a JV. There's a way that you create a contract so that, yeah, this particular one, we don't have anybody in Ghana who can do it, mm -hmm. but we're using this as the first initial step to acquire the knowledge and the expertise. Say, we'll give you the contract, but here are two Ghanaian companies, you work with them. We okay? do that these days sometimes. Yeah, okay. so that we have this knowledge transfer and all of that. So uh, I'm not saying that that there are certain areas that maybe we don't have expertise in Ghana. Mm -hmm. So some those areas you have to use outsiders. But even that we must try to gain the expertise. Some outside. people are asking questions about global access, but I think that one they can No, that's not in computer. But somebody says, uh, how much is a bottle of beer at your pub? Do you have a pub? I don't have a pub. Not, I don't have to coffee anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but let me ask all these people. Paul, mm -hmm. why is it that when we are discussing important issues, yes. people always want to personalize and insult people? You mm -hmm. go to Ghana Web, eh? the first comment on anybody's article is insulting people, insulting tribes. Please, we have to stop that. Mm -hmm. You know, when it comes to, like I, I started opening by saying that, I don't want to speak to anybody as a member of a, a political party. Yes. Don't listen to me as a member of a political party. Just two Ghanaian citizens talking. Let's get that culture back. Somebody yeah. wants to know how to sign the petition. Yeah, he wants the link. Yeah, I'll give it to you and then. Yeah. Um, okay, we'll, we'll put the link on and yeah, then. No. All right, no, no problem. We'll, we'll get the link on our social media uh, page so you can you can sign the link. Okay. Uh, I have more questions for Dr. Moy. Says um, 
but are you interested in agriculture yourself? Yes, I started life as an okra farmer, corn farmer. Yes, my father was a cocoa farmer. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so, so people are wondering whether you are practicing what you are preaching, that have you gone into farming? Then they all describe you as a very rich man. So they want to know, as a rich man, what is your contribution? Oh, um, I, I, I am to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't, I don't have uh, a big commercial farm. Mm -hmm. If I was going into agriculture, it would be massive. Mm -hmm. okay? It would be like you had 100 or 1,000 acres with, with combines and tractors, and my workers will have a house on the farm and all of that. But I'm not, that, I'm not doing that now. You know? I'm, I've invested in other areas. I, I, I'm doing other things. So is it okay for the country also to invest in other areas? Of course, yes. You can't invest in just one area. Mm. Are, you run, are you running out of things to ask me? Uh, yes, <laughs> we run out of time, actually. <laughs> but let me give you the, the link. So the link, get, yes. So yeah, let, yeah, let's yeah. give it. Okay, I support Doctor's point that our debt-to-GDP ratio is too high. Listening to him, I get the understanding that he wants the government to stop borrowing from outside. I want to know from him if there are avenues within Ghana that government can borrow from. Excellent question. Should I answer that? Yes. You should. I think you and I will discuss this before. China, Mao Zedong, borrowed only $85 million mm -hmm. from Japan, and he later on regretted it. You can find your development fund from within Ghana. Let me show you an example. Here in Accra, take the houses in cantonments, airport, Laboni, and so on these places. Later on, we can expand that to the whole country. Almost all these houses are paid for. That means, from historical record, some investments have been made in these buildings. Lots of money has been made. Now, when they were doing this banking reform, they didn't think about it. They only did that, but where is money going to come from? You have billions of dollars sunk into concrete in people's homes. Mm -hmm. A house serves two purposes, a shelter over your head, and it's an investment. But if the banking structure doesn't respect or recognize the inherent wealth sunk into buildings, you cannot release the money. You've been to my house in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. I can borrow, I can go and borrow any amount of money that is not up to 80% of the value of the house mm -hmm. and use that money as an investment to reinvest some way. Mm -hmm. So that... Well, the house has collateral. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't have that. You have a lot of people looking for money to do something, but their house is worth like 500000 400000 They can't even go and borrow 100000 200000 to invest. If that opportunity was there, you see that a lot of money will be released from ourselves. I don't get the point. Who is going to release that money? So I have a house. If you have, I, if who's going to give me money? Mortgage financing. Yeah. There are banks that are structured to do financing for houses. Yes. Okay. But how is the government going to get that? No, no. This is not a government thing. This is not a government thing. Yeah. But it's a government legislation and regulation of the banking system. That so, so the money is going to go to individuals. That's what you mean. The, yeah, individuals definitely. who own the houses. Yes. And they all have money to do yes. productive things. Thank you. And the aggregate of that is... Will is, be massive. Okay, I get the point. No. I get the point. So that's part of... Okay, so, so our viewers, no. the link is now under the uh, Facebook. We're wrapping up. Let me take another question. The major problem of agriculture is land acquisition. What is the advice on that one? Do you have something to say very quickly? Land well, during the Kufo time, I was a, uh, part of the Investment Advisory Council. I was the chairman of the uh, land committee and uh, the issue of land banks came in for government to negotiate with land owners, whether it's the chiefs or whatever, in all the regions. At that time, we had 10 regions. So in every region, government was to acquire certain amount of land from the traditional rulers. And these lands would then be available for investors who want to invest in agriculture in those regions. Mm -hmm. I think that that idea is self valid because nobody's going to come from outside to invest in land in Ghana and fight for unless we isolate. Okay, yeah, uh, another one. As we somebody is challenging you, saying that these things should not be personalized. He says, 
<laughs> and his name is Osan Hine Kofi Mensan Asomeni. Mm -hmm. He says, we have to personalize issues because nation building starts with individuals. That's what he said. No, personalizing it, Paul. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the insults and all of that. Mm -hmm. We are, you know, go to Ghana web. The fair, you know, it's, 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 I mean, if you are... Okay, if, a, a very final one. It's a long one from Echo Bryant. He's a regular viewer, so I have to read it. It says, <laughs> enjoying the conversation with Dr. Amor as always, but I think he's being unrealistic in some aspects of this subject. Hard to really understand his argument because some of it are inconsistent. In one breath, Dr. Amor is comparing us to the U.S., Italy, and European, Asian countries. And in another breath, he disapproves foreign contractors investing in infrastructure projects. Yes, he's concentrated on the problems. What solutions does he offer? Sir Paul, why do I have a feeling Dr. Amor is indirectly launching himself for a public portfolio? Cheers. I have not said we should not allow foreign contractors to invest in Ghana. I didn't say no, that. No, you didn't say that. You okay. said we should not give our debt. Go and loan take a loan and give pay it, to, it to a foreign exactly. contractor to do the work. Exactly. Because it's a loan and the people of Ghana are going to pay. Yes. As much as possible, apply it to the people of Ghana and generate income out of it. Thank you. So that we but, can pay them. So I made your point. You'll be excellent. 20 cities. <laughs> I'll pay. <laughs> okay, all right. I think we've got to end it right, here. All right. If you want me to, should I say my final? Yes. Um, uh, fellow Ghanaians, I am very, very uh, pleased and honored to have this opportunity uh, this evening to talk about the, the death hang of our nation. I have, I have demonstrated clearly that I'm not against taking a loan. A loan is, is one of the vehicles individuals, companies, and nations use to create progress. There's nothing wrong with that. But also giving you reasons why when we take a loan, the loan might be used in a certain way to, to be able to make it more impactful to our economy and to our society. I've talked about the ripples of investment benefits within a society. I've talked about the, the dangers of borrowing for consumption or borrowing and giving the contract to foreigners and then we are not having the impact here and then it's not generating our ability to pay the loan back. Right now, I think 40, now 3 billion more. For the 3 billion, 80% debt, uh, uh, de 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 debt to GDP ratio is unsustainable. So my thing is that all Ghanaians must become alert on this issue and let our parliamentarians know that we are not going to take it anymore, that they keep rubber stamping requests from the executive branch. They must interrogate it. And those that are not in the beneficial interest of the nation. And also, they must begin to put conditions on loans that Ghana take, that this loan we are proving is conditional. Maybe 80% of it must be given to Ghanaian contractors, Ghanaian consultants. If we do that, we we'll begin to see an impact in our economy, jobs will be created, and it will help us to curtail the heavy reliance on importation. And also, once more jobs are created, you have more Ghanaians who are taxpayers and government task coffers will be improved and we should be able to retire our debts. Thank you very much. Okay.